Okay, we have two more examples to do using the elimination method. <clears throat> the first one says we're going to eliminate y. Now normally in your homework it's not going to say whether you should eliminate x or y. You'll be able to choose whichever one looks easier for you. But in this case we'll, do, we'll eliminate y. So, what do you think we have to multiply the two equations by? We have 3 and negative 2. Well, they are the opposite sign, which is great, but I'm going to need to multiply this 3 by 2 and multiply this 2 by 3. So I will put times 2 times 3, and we'll get two new looking equations that will be equivalent to these two. So multiplying the first one by 2, I get 8x plus 6y equals negative 2. The second equation multiplied by 3 will give us 15x minus 6y equals negative 21. And as we desired, our coefficients of the y's are now opposite. So when we add them together, they cancel out. So when we add the equations, we'll get negative 21 and negative 2 is negative 23. 8x and 15x is 23x. Sorry, I wrote that at an angle. So when we divide both sides by 23, we get x equals negative 1. I'll write that right up here. Now, let's take equation number 1 or 2, it doesn't matter, and plug in x equals negative 1 to figure, it out, figure out what y is. So equation number 1 would be 4 times negative 1 plus 3y is equal to negative 1. So that's negative 4 plus 3y equals negative 1. And then we're going to add positive 4 to both sides. That gives us 3y equals 3. Well, that's simple. Divide both sides by 3 gives us y equals 1. So the ordered pair, the solution to that system of equations, is negative 1, 1. I'm just going to verify that by plugging in x equals negative 1 and y equals 1 into the second equation. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Minus 2 times 1, which would be minus 2. Negative 5 minus 2 is indeed negative 7. So we got the correct answer. Now the last example, we're going to have a bit of a word problem to do here. Jim has $440 in his savings account. He adds or deposits an additional $12 every single week. At the same time, Rhonda had $260 in her savings account, and she adds or deposits $18 per week. Well, notice that she starts with less than Jim has, but she's adding more money each week. So eventually, she's going to catch him and even surpass his amount. So the question is, how long will it take for Rhonda to have the same amount as Jim? So let's come up with a formula that gives us a function, that gives us how much Jim has on any given week. And we'll do the same thing for Rhonda. So first, let's take a look at Jim. I'll write way over here. For the week number, let's see, I'll write week number zero right here. This is the week number, one, two, Jim has, oops, Jim has how much? Well, at week zero, sorry, that's kind of off there. At week zero, we'll say that's how much he starts with. He starts off with $440. How much does he have one week later? He adds 12, so it would be 440 plus 12. Week two, he has 440 plus how much? Well, 2 times 12. Week 3, he has 440 plus 3 times 12. How much would he have on week X? X is going to be our week number. He'd have 440 plus 
x times 12. Maybe I should have written that as 12x. $12 times the number of weeks. So we could come up with a function. Maybe I call it j of x. j of x is going to be the number of dollars that Jim has in his account at week number x. So we'll make a note. x goes 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. It's weak numbers. Well, he'll have 440 plus. And I'll write it like 12x this time. This is the function that describes how much Jim has in his, in his account at week number x. Well, similarly, I think we can do Rhonda. Her function, r of x, would be equal to what? Her starting amount. This was Jim's starting amount. That's Rhonda's starting amount. Plus, how much is she adding each week? 18. So 18x. Those are the two important functions. So how long will it take for Rhonda to have the same amount of, as Jim? In other words, what week number will make Jim's amount equal to Rhonda's amount? We're just going to set these two expressions equal to each other and solve for x. When is 440 plus 12x equal to 260 plus 18x? Now, I'm going to do two things in one, in, in one step to solve this. <clears throat> I'm going to subtract 12x from both sides. And I'm going to subtract 260 from both sides. Uh, maybe I won't. I'll, I'll break it up into two steps. Let's just do this. We'll get rid of the x term on the left. So 4, 40, because that canceled out, equals 260 plus 6x, 18x minus 12x. Subtract 260 from both sides. And what does that give us? 260 from that would be 180. So all I did there is subtract 260 from both sides. And I think we know how to divide. Let's see, divide that by 6, divide that by 6. That cancels. We get x equals 180 over 6. 180, let's see, 6 is 3 times 18. Six, 18 is 6 times 3, so that would be 30. So, how long will it take for Rhonda to have the same amount as Jim? 30 weeks. Okay, and how much will each one have at that time? Well, this is very simple. At week 30, how much would Jim have? At week 30, how much would Rhonda have? We'll compute them. And it, we really should compute both of them to make sure we didn't make a mistake. The number is going to be the same because we just solved. X is the number, is the weak number, where they will have the same amount in their savings accounts. Let's just verify that. J of X, ooh, I don't need J of X, I need J of 30. Remember, this is the amount that that Jim has in his account at week number x. Well, we're choosing x equals 30. So j of 30 is 440 plus 12 times 30. That's 440 plus 12 times 3 is 36 with the 0. That's equal to, if you add those two numbers together, we would get 700, 800. That's $800. I don't know if I can make a tiny dollar sign. I'll put the dollar sign way out there. $800. And similarly, let's just, that's the answer, but we're going to verify that we made no arithmetic mistakes and make sure we get $800 when we plug in x equals 30 for Rhonda. The amount of money she has at week 30 would be 260 plus 18 times 30. 260 plus 18 times 30. That is 260 plus. 18 times 3 is 54, so that would be 540. If you add up those numbers, you get 700, you get 800 again. 
So we discovered that at week 30, Jim and Rhonda would have the same amount of money in the bank, and that amount would be $800. So at week number 31, or 32, or 33, do you know who would have more money? From now on, it's going to be Rhonda, because at week 30, they have the same amount, but she continues to put 18 per week in her account, where Jim only puts $12 per week in his account.